Big Bang Blue, that's PPG's Vibrance. And then what I did this morning, after we shot it yesterday, it still didn't match closely enough to the gauges, which is what the client wanted for the factory backlit. So we went ahead and mixed up this morning off of the Big Bang Blue, a custom color. You can Let's see the press. Rubicon style hood, and then now the color change to so that white versus that Big Bang Blue with a custom mix on top. Don't touch it. I know for some reason you like to touch everything in the So here we are inside the BEM wet. Yes. Here we are inside the BEM paint booth uh, itself, and this is the color that Bob custom matched for the uh, Jeep itself. Now, Bob, does that mean we're going to have to go through a mission to jam? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll let all these coats dry. I'm going to do my traditional two to three coats. These are pretty heavy coats on here now, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more final coat. So pretty much heavy two coats. Yep. And then I'll let everything dry. Typically with paint, it's about 30 to 60 minutes, depending on temperature. Then we can flip all these parts, unbag all of the door jams, as you can see. All the jams are taped up right now. Underneath of here, we'll unbag them. We'll flip everything so that we don't have any lines in the face of this when we're done. And then I'll go ahead and shoot the jams on it. And then all these parts are ready to walk over. We'll hang them on the Jeep. We'll go ahead and reassemble everything. And again, this is how far we went, was removing door handle assemblies on the front doors, removing the door locks, which is a super, super massive process on the Jeep Wranglers. So removing all those internal components, all of the factory weather strip that goes around the window trim, the glass is outside of the doors. This thing is literally stripped down to the way Mopar would have done it, coming down the assembly line, all the way down to the door hinges being coated on the doors themselves, which is the way that Mopar does it from the factory. A lot of people are like, oh, well, it looks like you didn't take the time to disassemble them, but that's exactly the way the dealer would have done them because when you do remove Jeep doors, you just remove it from a Torx on the bottom and lift them right off the studs. And great care, of course, is taken above to protect all the door sleeves and the pin sleeves themselves so that there was no sticking, no binding, no problems like that. The other thing, Bob, that's very interesting to note is this is another BEM custom-made Jeep bumper. 
Um, this is what you've come, you, you've done this on several other uh, bumpers. You took an out of the box bumper, cut it up, and custom made this area down in here, as well as this area up in here. You remove the, you do uh, on the front bumpers, you remove the winch holes uh, yeah. at the top and the front, and this allows the Jeep bumper to wrap around all the way on the side to protect the well, that's, you know, typically there's a lot of companies out there that make aftermarket Jeep parts. It's virtually freaking endless. You can buy hundreds of brand of Jeep products and accessories, and it's been around for years. Yeah. Like, almost 100 years now, there's been like Jeep products, eight years, have been around for Jeeps, and that's what makes these things insane. A lot of companies in the aftermarket typically stop their bumpers right at the body line or the quarter panel, because most Jeepers out there go out and they do aftermarket tube fenders, something narrower, something wider, and then the ultimate result is you have a fender that's a different width than factory, so it yes. won't line up with a factory front or rear bumper. So then you go aftermarket. Most of these companies go with like what you call a stubby version, that's correct, yeah. to where they're narrow, they're tapered to the body or tapered to the grill, and then you have this kind of unfinished look depending on what brand of products you buy, like maybe it's Smitty built rear bumper and like rough country you know, tubular fenders. The two companies aren't going to line up. They're just not meant to. They're not. So what we do is take all of these bumpers, whatever brand they are, and we match them literally with 316 plating and welding, cutting, grinding. Uh, we, design, we do all template designs with cardboard, mock them up. So everything from about here over has all been one-off fab for this Jeep, mocked up on it so that it lines up exactly to the fenders that are designed on that Jeep right now. I have one question. Can I get a strawberry donut? Uh, the guy was crushing. He has a big strawberry around his lips still right now. Hey, but what do we have right here? Uh, you asked me to grab this for you this morning. Can you tell everybody exactly what this was and why you needed it for this particular project? So because we were doing a custom mix on here, what I actually wanted to do was we started off with that big band blue, right? Yes. Um, that was the PPG's Vibrance color. We already showed it. Don't go yet. Okay. So he's going to spill it if he brings it over. I'm going to guarantee it. I don't want to throw my that trash out. Uh -huh. on so this is actually just nothing more than a paint stir. We're gonna go ahead and drop this thing down into that gallon. So with custom mixes, any sort of heavy flakes, heavy pearls, in this case, we have probably five different shades of paint. We mix together and come up with this beautiful color here. We are going to drop this thing down into our gallon of custom mix paint every time we go to pour, right? So every time I go to mix and, and do my 50-50 ratio, one-to-one -one reduction, I'm going to stir it with a high-speed drill just to make sure that that color consistency is there on every right. time. So because naturally, paints will separate, they'll push away from each other. Blacks and whites and blues and reds, they will all push away. So something at the bottom of the bucket might be different than a color at the top of the bucket. And that's when you get these cars, they're all different shadows. They're different shadows. As they've been painted, right? You can always tell when a car, even high-end build companies out there, trust me, I've seen them with heavy pearls. You can tell when they've shot the doors or the hood or something separate, and they haven't stirred consistency the same way because regardless of using the exact same paint, exact same clear coat, exact same primer, same every step possible, you're still having to work with heavy plates and heavy pearls. Yeah. So you definitely want to mix that up so it's consistent on every time you shoot it. Doesn't matter if you shoot it today, tomorrow, three weeks from now, the color is the color. And Bob, it's, it's important to note that this $5 tool is what you'll use to make sure in part that the consistency stays the same. That's it. In other words, as you always said, don't cheat it. Go. Well, even I mean, even something like this. So typically when you're done with this, it's going to be ruined because the paint's going to dry on here. So now we're going to have this color blue on here when this job is done. So now I can't take this blue and put it into a red right. or a white later on and use that stirring because for some examples, it may transfer. Chunks of this may flake off because there's going to be dry blue on here. So that could flake off and then it could ruin the next batch of paint. Get stuck in your gun, perhaps, yep. something like that, creating a splatting feel. Yep. Uh, 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 a pattern of what you're looking for. Hey, this color, let me tell you, bro. Good, bud. This is a massive difference from what it was, which was identical almost to the color of the hood right now, to this. And the only reason the hood's not done is we're going to do the hood, the front fenders, the grill, front bumper, all of that coating will be done at one time. The reason we do the doors and everything is to keep them all consistent and match right now. So we're going to move into that next. Now that the color is right, we know exactly what we're going for, and it looks freaking gorgeous, dude. This right is on. like killer. Another good job. Yeah, and then we'll carry these parts next door. My plan was actually, we can actually now, because these are all empty shell doors, we can actually take them over once they're dry and the jams are all done. Take them over, set them on the Jeep, even though the, you know, the jams of the Jeep aren't done yet. We can still set them on there, and we can go ahead and assemble the window regulators, the door locks, the mirrors, the handles. How does that affect the balance of the Jeep? 
body that you have to paint this. Because on a Jeep it's super easy, it's just on pins. So essentially all I'm gonna do is carry them over, just set them on just to mock it up and get everything built and finished. And then we'll just lift the doors back off and bring the Jeep over into the paint booth and shoot the jams on the Jeep. But then everything else will be done and ready, so it's just plug and play. Which again speaks to why you're so careful about taking off the pin areas so that they slide back in the mount. Just stick it right on there and it's done. You're not gonna fight it, you're not gonna have to deal with any hassle. It's literally going to be just like some guy on their weekend ready to take the doors off and that's it. How about the door handles? Like what are they gonna look like? Are you so these things stock black? No, so um, you know that's kind of where we went super heavy on this thing. We actually use a custom one-off billet design door handle, front, rear, and tailgate. We have all these custom design handles for it, custom mirrors for this thing. So we have a lot of pieces that are going to look super killer, and that's why we didn't want to just go with a basic white Jeep. I don't know. So